Hello, and we got some explosive news for you guys. What are we talking about? We're talking about the DTCC. That's right, the government might be involved in a pump and dump. Now, it wasn't much of a dump, and the fat cats might be upset because of that, because people know that the ETF is coming no matter what they pull off. What I mean by pump and dump is yesterday night, the DTCC listed iShares uh, Bitcoin ETF, that's BlackRock's, on their register, and people were like, oh, it's about to come out. And today, they took it off and tried to devastate us. But it didn't work, because people know it's coming sooner or later, and they are not selling out. So, I don't know if this was planned or not, but the thing is, the DTCC website went down because so many people were checking it. That might actually be the reason they took it off, because they couldn't uh, accept the traffic coming in for people checking it. And uh, obviously the government website, they don't really like to be down all the time. I don't, I didn't expect that. Uh, I don't think they expected that people would actually be that um, interested in it. And because of that, they just put it up saying, oh, you know, it's going to come out in a couple of months anyways, or a couple of weeks or however long. And we'll just leave it up here. But people in the crypto world, a hundred percent took notice and because they 100% took notice, there were hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, that were checking the DTCC website, though they had to take it down. I don't think they wanted to give everyone that advance of a notice. Those things, they might want it to come out like maybe a day or two ahead of the ETF time. And we might have a couple of weeks before the ETF is actually finalized. So that's probably why they took it down. But people are not fooled that that means the SEC is going to reject the ETF. What does that mean? I mean, people are looking at other evidence, like BlackRock has said they're going to start seed funding their ETF. They know it's coming. And we know that this particular day, there were over there was like $60 million worth of inflows into Bitcoin. Now, most of these inflows are from foreign funds that are applying for an ETF in the United States. What I hypothesize they're doing is that since you can't actually buy it in the United States right now because the ETFs don't actually exist, they're using their foreign arm branches to actually buy Bitcoin for the ETF. And when they get approved in the United States for their ETF, they're going to switch some of that money into the United States. So you see like funds flowing in. And what's even more, there's over been over $600 million inflow this year. So the smart money, as many of you would actually put it, have been buying Bitcoin since the beginning of this year, pretty much ever since FTX collapsed because they realized something. And what they realized was that the bottom was when FTX collapsed. See, when one of those giant black swan events actually happened, um, the price doesn't really go down any further until you get another big black swan event. And since there were no big black swan events from then until now, They've been accumulating a lot, and last winter was the actual bottom. I know a lot of people won't like me saying that because they want the actual bottom to be sometime this year and not uh, last year or early next year because they missed that bottom. They were waiting for 10K or 12K. They were unfortunately listening to Gareth Soloway or someone like that, and they missed the bottom. And now that we're going up, I don't think we're actually going to go down because people are holding it in anticipation of the ETF. And it's not just retail holders actually holding BTC. It is like institutional holders actually buying BTC right now. Um, institutional holders like uh, you know iShares, like BlackRock, they're seeding, and other things like uh, and other players that have ETFs, ETPs in other countries, they're the ones buying right now in anticipation of the BTC, of the BTC ETF. And the thing is, like they're not going to stop buying; they're going to slowly buy in until they actually can buy in the United States, and then they're going to buy more because they're going to need Bitcoin to fund their spot ETF. All this means that we're going to be doing very, very well in the future going towards the halving. I think the latest date that a Bitcoin ETF can actually be um, approved would be in January. They pretty, pretty much have to approve one by then. But it could come as early as this Friday or sometime like 
um, this month or next month. A lot of people are looking for November or December, and I think there's a very high possibility that we'll get one approved um, with the information that we have now. You know, like people don't accumulate this stuff for no reason. BlackRock would not actually seed their ETF fund if they didn't think it was going to get passed soon. And I don't think the other countries would act, the other countries, the ETF branches in those countries would actually be accumulating Bitcoin for nothing because they know it's going up and investors know it's going up and they're throwing money at it too. And I think the uh, Grayscale one just got listed at Russell Index as well, FTSE Index. So there's a lot of stuff coming in saying that, you know, the ETF will be approved soon. And I think like regardless of how hard they try to uh, like, you know, take it down um, and try to like, you know, rug pull us or something. I don't think people are buying their shit. Like the Cointelegraph intern, obviously, had some good news, I think, and they just didn't want to broadcast it out early. So that's what happened last week. But you know, the thing is, he might have gotten fired from Cointelegraph, but it looks like he got hired at the DTCC. So he's on his shenanigans again. But, you know, I jest, obviously. But I do think these things weren't just complete coincidences. I do think there is a very, very high possibility that these were accidental leaks. And like, you know, the DTCC put it in there because they are about to accept one. But it was just a couple of days ahead of time or a couple of weeks ahead of time. And I think you'll be seeing it on there again in the subsequent days or weeks because the SEC cannot actually stop this anymore. And the thing is, like, they have to, the judge has ordered the SEC with no additional instructions to re-review the Grayscale ETF because I think the SEC is pretty much done stalling and they're going to have to approve one. Like I said in the last video, they are working with the major ETF, um, the, the ETF filers to actually finalize things for the ETF. And all this stuff, all the listings that just got pulled are not a coincidence and they're all a result of this. So this is very, very good news for all of us. And we should be very happy that this is actually working out because I think it's all going to work out in our favor in the end. So very, very awesome news. I really love what's happening. And I do think it's going to slowly keep going up towards the end of the year. Another piece of good news is that Tom Emmer was officially nominated by the GOP to be Speaker of the House. Now, whether he's a rhino or not, whatever, he is one of the most pro-crypto congressmen there is right now. Donald Trump doesn't support him, um, and that's because he actually he actually voted to certify the 2020 election. That actually has nothing to do with any of his other stances. Donald Trump won't be, uh, won't actually support anyone who actually certified the last election because obviously he wants to keep that mantra on. He wants someone from the Freedom Caucus. He wanted someone like Jim Jordan because he knows that Jim Jordan would actually use the gavel to try to maybe obstruct the stuff that Donald Trump is facing right now, and he desperately needs someone to do that. So he's not going to um, support Tom Emmer. But if you actually look at Tom Emmer's crypto history, if you're a crypto aficionado, it doesn't really matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, you want Tom Emmer or Patrick McHenry. It doesn't actually matter which one of those guys, but they are the most pro-crypto people out there, and I think they can do a lot for crypto. So if you're a crypto aficionado, you want Tom Emmer. You know, like, I might be a Democrat. Well, I'm not actually a registered Democrat or a Republican, but I might vote more Democrat, but I will support Tom Emmer fully. However, there were 26 Republicans that actually did not vote for him on the roll call vote. And you can't afford to lose more than four of the Republicans unless you form a coalition with the Democrats. And there doesn't seem to be that much appetite, at least yet, for a coalition government. And the thing is, if you don't make the Democrats an offer, they're not going to vote for you. That's just not how our speakership and our dual party system works. Generally, like one party never votes for the other one unless there is some kind of compromise or agreement or some power sharing agreement. They have a majority, but they can't settle on a candidate. Um, basically, what's happening right now is the MAGA people aren't going to vote for anyone outside the Pre Freedom Caucus. They're going to try to block everything. And of course, the moderates are not going to vote for anyone in the Freedom Caucus. So that's why we're kind of jammed right now. The MAGA people are basically following Donald Trump's like orders in lockstep. 
And the other people just don't really like that. So that's why we're kind of stuck. And I think a coalition government is the only way out. And if there is a coalition government, I actually support Patrick McHenry first. And then I will support Tom Emmer. Because the thing is, like, his crypto stance is basically enough for me to overlook all his other stances at this point. And I do want him to actually, like, fight against Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler, and other anti-crypto elements in Congress. But he is the nominee right now. He's the front runner. It's doubtful that it'll actually get elected because there's going to be people from the Freedom Caucus that are not going to vote for him. And he's going to have to make a coalition government with the Democrats, which I don't think he's actually going to do right now. So that's what we have for today. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button, and I will see you guys later.